the New York Giants Sports Talk and Entertainment. Boy, it's just been one of those weird days. Uh, we got the old computer equipment out. We're getting the new computer equipment in on Thursday. We will be revamping the online Big Blue Studios to be bringing you better content and more uh, FaceTime or on face camera, or whatever. I'll be on camera more. So that, I mean that that'll be the uh, that'll be more the juxta of this. And again, look at this little quick housekeeping work. If you're not getting notifications, make sure you go on the video, ring the turn on the bell, and make sure the bell is set for all notifications. And that way, you will get all of our information coming out from Online Big Blue Sports Entertainment. So let's get into a couple things right now. I have two topics to discuss. Why I fear the Washington Redskins. Walk in Washington Redskins. Sorry. I'm going to have to find myself a dollar every time I say that. Why I fear the Washington football team. And Odell Beckham came. Let's start with Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham basically did a podcast not too long ago, and basically he said that uh, the Giants wasted Eli Manning's career towards the end. They didn't draft well. He never wanted to leave the Giants. He always wanted to be there. And he alluded to the fact that it was Dave Gellerman and Pat Shermer that were the uh, – the driving force to get him out of New York. He thought he never was going to leave New York, yada, 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 yada. And he will give us all the glorious information and all the scuttlebutt once he retires or reaches closer to retirement. And he doesn't name names. You know, it's just like one of these things. Odell, Odell is that girlfriend you keep running into in the club and who cannot stop bothering you and cannot stop talking to you. You, you're, you've been gone now for years, Odell. You were a great giant. You were a, you were a once-in-the-lifetime talent for this team. They paid you like you were that, and then they traded you. Does that suck? Hell yeah, that sucks. That sucks big time. It sucks for the organization. It sucks for I, I And I think a lot of people always think about that. Just imagine the full complement of Daniel Jones... Saquon Barkley, Odell Beckham. Having that big-time receiver, I mean the big-time receiver, I mean the game-breaker. Yeah, Golden Tate still has a little juice left in the legs every once in a while. Darius Slayton, when he's not disappearing, can can open up a game. But if you go back to OBJ, uh, Odell Beckham Jr. and remember his career in the beginning, he was, he was an X-factor. And I'm not talking mad next factor. He was he was the guy that could change the game. He was like Lawrence Taylor on the offense. Lawrence Taylor could disrupt a game like no other player in the NFL history. I mean, to the point that Joe Joe Gibb had to specially design offenses around him, around his team, just to stop Lawrence Taylor. Joe Bugle, who was the offensive line coach back in the day, again, they had a scheme just to stop a linebacker, and that was never heard of before. Odell Beckham, you could double him, you could triple him, but he seemed, early in his career, he seemed like he could always get the ball. He could always get the ball into the touchdown. He could find a way to do it. Then the catch came about. Uh, I, I don't blame the catch as his his downfall. I, I blame injuries. I blame the league adjusting a little bit. I blame lack of talent around him. But to, to continue this facade of a relationship with the Giants, if you want to come back to New York, you know what? Just say, I, honey, I love you and I want to come back. Well, maybe not say that. But just say, I, I, want to be, I, I want to be a Giant. And I want to stay a Giant. Maybe sometime later in his career, he will find his way back to New York. But at this point in time, it's just Odell, you, you just kind of... You kind of just have to give it up, man. You know, I'm not trying to be rude about it, but it's time just to move on and do something else. Or not do something else, but, you know, just focus on being a Cleveland Brown. Now, one of the things, of course, Washington won the other night. Uh, Dallas is still yet to play, but I don't even care about Dallas. A couple of weeks back, I said the only team I fear in the NFC East would be the Redskins. <laughs> Another dollar in the jar <laughs> would be the Washington football team. And people are like, you don't know what you're talking about, man. You, 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 it's Dallas. Dallas is the team that's no. Dallas is a train wreck. That defense is a train wreck. You you're 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 hanging your hopes on Andy Dalton. I don't know what happened to Ezekiel Elliott. I don't know what happened to that offensive line besides age and injuries. But the team that you need to fear. And I said this even before they won. 
against the, against the Steelers would be the Washington team. What, simple reasons why. In some ways, they are a mirror of the New York Giants. They have an outstanding defense. They have young talent on the defense. They have somewhat interchangeable talent on the defense. I think in some ways they have a better secondary than the Giants. They have, of course, more first-round talent on that. I think they have, what, four on the defensive line? But they are gelling together at the right time. They have the ability to be a disruptive force with that front four. And their offense is suspect. Outside of one wide receiver, you know, there's there's not as much consistency that they that they have on the offense. They've gotten better with Alex Smith, but they're still not a potent offensive team. They can have their moments because of the fact that Alex Smith is an NFL quarterback. He was, you know, he was a first all first round first all overall pick. He's been in the league forever. He's bounced around a couple teams here and there, but he knows how to play the game. He knows how to not – well, you know, not recently. <laughs> Back in the day, Alex Smith didn't make mistakes. He, thank God he did at the Giant game. But he didn't make – he doesn't make mistakes. But he doesn't have the offensive talent around him that he they need to have to put up a big number of points. But they don't have to right now because they have an extremely stout defense who's starting to gel. So if you look at the Giants in the mirror the same way, the Giants have a defense predicated on substitution with multiple players filling multiple roles at multiple times. And right now, everyone is buying into the assignments. They have Leonard Williams, who is playing at an pro, not even a pro bowl, but an all pro level. I keep seeing the thing where people are like, we have to pay him. We have to pay him. Why do we have to pay Leonard Williams? Are you 100% sure that Leonard Williams isn't being Leonard Williams because he's in a contract year? Are you 100% sure Leonard Williams isn't being Leonard Williams because of the system of Patrick Graham? Or is he going to be the guy he was for the last five years? I hate when people have I, I hate when people have so-so seasons, like two good seasons and three bad seasons in five years, and then they have an awesome season that people are like, you have to pay him. No, you don't have to pay him. You could draft someone on the defensive end. You could go into free agency and probably find someone better suited for this team. Right now, Leonard Williams is very is very well suited for this team and this scheme. But we don't know what's going to happen with Patrick Graham next year. And I I said this before. Right now, this is working. And what's going to happen though? NFL teams are going to start adjusting to this substitutional defense. They're going to figure out, okay, when Carter Coughlin and Tay Crowder come into the game, the Giants do this. They are going to find the tendencies. It's the same thing with the offensive line and the shifting of the offensive line. They are going to find the tendencies. Okay, when Will Hernandez and Matt from Connecticut comes in, this is what the Giants do. And this is what NFL teams do. They have a whole department that just looks at tendencies and and scouts tendencies (laughs) and writes them all down. And that's what's going to happen. So right now it's working perfectly. But who knows what's going to happen next year. So you better be 100% sure that Leonard Williams is the guy for all plays, for all downs. And he is not going to revert to the guy he was a couple years ago. Or not even a couple years ago, last year, where he was, one, where he was the king of the almost sack. That's what you need to be concerned about. You want to pay Leonard Williams, you're going to have to find the money. And you're going to have to be willing to take that large portion of cash and put it towards one defensive player. I can understand doing that with Blake Martinez. I understood doing it with with James Bradbury. If Peppers can starts to continue to play at the level he is and continues to play this year and finish it out this year and next year, I can see giving him the cash. But right now, I can't see giving Leonard Williams the cash. But Washington scares me because, like I said, they are a mirror image of the Giants. The Giants' offense right now is built around the running game, which is what it should have been this entire season. And it's built around the quarterback not making mistakes, and hopefully Evan Ingram doesn't fumble or cause an interception. And that's the way they need to win games. They need to go back to the Giants, the Giants of yore. 
go back to like the 86 team. The 86 team didn't have a bad offense. They had a they had a they had a average offense. But the defense was so well above average that it didn't matter. But the offense shined when it needed to. And that's what the offense does now for the Giants. But the scary thing as well, that is what the offense does for Washington. Now, the only saving grace we have is that we swept Washington this year. If we did not sweep this team, you know, I I would be more concerned. But their schedule is, I mean, you look at it, they got the 49ers, the Seahawks, the Panthers, and the Eagles. They could potentially win three games. So, which would mean we would have to keep pace against the Browns, the Cardinals, the Ravens, and the Cowboys. If there's anyone's schedule that I wanted, I would want Washington's schedule over ours. I'm not saying it's going to be, I mean, I'm not saying it's an insurmountable task, but you know what? We have to win and we have to keep pace. And that's really it. And I think we can do it. And I think as an organization, if we match them game for game, and this is going to have to start Sunday. I'm not going to do my Sunday prediction yet till later in the week again. Um, but like I said, it, it's going to start on Sunday versus, versus Arizona. And Arizona is not, is, not is not an easy out. And that's something that we need as Giants fans to. We have to enjoy, and I'm saying this before, we have to enjoy the moment, enjoy having meaningful playoff games or playoff opportunity games in December, meaningful games in December. We're going to leave it at that, and we're going to try, and we're going to see what's going to happen. And again, this is Tim with Online Big Blue bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you could subscribe, if you could ring that bell, I think you know what that means. That'd be awesome.